<laughs> room service? Yeah, it's room service. Oh, thank you, darling. You deserve it. Hmm. Thank you. Honey, when you bring me coffee in bed, it means one thing. Oh, what's that? You're softening me up for something. Well, what's such as? I got a horrible feeling here that any minute now I'm going to hear you say, Sorry, Julie, I won't be home this weekend. Sorry, Julie. I won't be home this weekend. I knew it. I knew it. Why not? Edinburgh. Because we're going to spend the weekend in Edinburgh together. something different, darling. Oh, come on, let's go before that telephone has a chance to ring. Must have heard you. Hello. Ward. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, thanks for letting me know. It's those break rims on the draw works. If they don't hold out, we have to stop drilling. And can you believe it? They don't have any spares out there. It's been bugging me. So no lovely weekend together. What? No lovely weekend together. Oh, no, not so, because that was Cameron, and he's managed to get a hold of some spares. They're on their way by road from Aberdeen. And to be on the rig tonight, and that's one heck of a night. <laughs> so we are off to Edinburgh, so get your clothes on. Car registration number, we reckon the dead man to be Ian Lachlan. Oh, the chemist in Mackay Street. Aye. And the lorry driver, how's he? Oh, he'll be all right, just bruises and concussion. Mm. Well, have you any idea what caused the accident? Aye, I'll show you. Now, the lorry was coming down here. Uh, he pulled over for the car and the near side wheel dropped bang into this. The lorry jackknifed and, well, there you have it. The shoulder of the road's just crumbled away here. No, it's the wear and tear we're getting these days. Yes, I know what you mean. Inspector! Oh, excuse me. Fergus, take a good shot of this, will you? Right. How long do you think before I can get through? Well, we've a cream coming up from Aberdeen, but you'll not get through for hours yet. My load's urgent. Who's it for? Scotch Rig Services. A Muirport. All right, we'll let them know. Uh, get on your car radio. Ask the station sergeant to pass the word. Sir. What? The police say the road won't be clear for hours. <sighs> for ten whole days we've sweated waiting for those lousy brake rims and now this has to happen. Why couldn't you have got them up here sooner? There are plenty of other rigs besides you sitting out there. Every item of everything you need is at a premium. Well, pay the premium, then. Now, look, Jim, I use every trick in the book to get you priority. Only once in a while do I lose. And this has to be one of those ones. Sorry. You should be. Get me Frank Ward. Uh. Hello, Ward here. This is Jim Fraser. Where are you? Oh, five or six miles outside of town, heading south. A weekend in Edinburgh, remember? Well, you won't get much further. The road's blocked. There's been an accident. You didn't call me to give me the traffic news, Jim Boy. What's wrong? Uh, our spare brake rims. They're the wrong side of the wreckage. Oh, great. Frank. Yeah? How'd it be if we sent the truck back to Aberdeen and airlifted them out to the rig from the heliport there? All right. I'll get things moving. Call you back. 
I'm afraid we're going to be a little late getting to Edinburgh, honey. Sorry. Fergus says the prince will be ready in half an hour. Where was the lorry taking this load? The driver was on his way to hospital before I got there. He's still unconscious. Is there no manifest in his cabin? I didn't look. And you didn't ask the police? Well, no. Oh, lassie, next time, look or ask. One or the other. Preferably both. What was the lorry carrying? Steel pipes. For the pipeline? I think they were drill pipes. Ah. Then they'll be for Scots Rake services. Lachlan was a good man. Popular man. Member of town council. I served this community well. There's a lot of things need say, Shona. We'll run this on the front page. Inspector, I'm Frank Ward with Nelson Drilling Company and Triumph Oil. Yes, sir. Well, you really got a bad one here, huh? All right. Say, I got a little problem. That truck up there, it has some equipment that we need out on the rig. Well, I'll see what I can do, sir. Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you could just sort the traffic out so we can get the truck turned around headed back to Aberdeen. All right, well, I'd be the last one to stand in the way of Scotland's prosperity. Thank you. Jim, yes. Hold on. Brian? Brian? What's that? Oh, you're sorry about all this. Oh, so am I. It's Jim, darling. Hello, Frank. Tell X from the rig. Those brake rims are cracking up. How severe is the cracking? Well, not too badly. How soon can that lorry be back in Aberdeen? Now, look, Jim. Those rims may be all right now, but I've known some blow so fast that it's suddenly like the 4th of July. How's the weather? Forecast still the same? Yeah, two perfect drilling days, and then the rough stuff will shut us down again. Frank? You still there? Yeah. I'm thinking. We can't afford to lose any part of those two days, so we'll lift those rims off from right here. You get a chopper on his way, and I'll fly out to meet him. All right. Julie. I know. Back to the house and wait. Well, it's not going to be for long. We'll still have our weekend, I promise you. It's my job. Oh, honey, it always is.
Whether you want it. Uh -uh. Tell you as soon as that infernal machine lets me. Something else we've got to thank you well, people, for. That rock, racket goes on day and night. Is that what you're here to tell me? Uh, no, 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 no. Look, uh, here. I'd like your, uh, I'd like your comments on these. For your paper? Correct. Nasty accident. I'm sorry about it. Oh, I want more than that, Cameron. All right, I'm very sorry about it. Look, man, there hasn't been a death on that stretch of road for years. But now it's happened, and it won't be the last. Look, see you. That's the cause of it. That rut. And the cause of the rut is the heavy traffic the road has to carry these days. There is no railway. That's the only road from the south into Muirport, so we use it. Twenty-ton juggernauts. The road was never meant for that kind of a load. It's like asking a wee laddie to do a man's job. Well, if you want the wee lad to grow up into a man, campaign for better roads in your paper, instead of shouting and bawling against the people who are trying to bring a bit of prosperity to the country. Aye, but prosperity for who? Tell me that. Scotland will get the slice of the profits it deserves. Aye, and we all know what that'll be. It'll be sweet nothing if the rest of us down too, so listen to your blatherings. Or start going in for the kind of rubbish Shona's always I, 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 no, I'm not responsible for Shona's opinions, just my own. Aye, and they're as daft as hers. Without oil, the country wouldn't last a week. Oil doesn't just drive power stations and ships and heat factories, you know. It's in the clothes you wear, the shoes on your feet. Excuse me. The paint you put in your house, the carpet you walk on. Mary, tell McKendrick I'll be there in a minute. Plastics, chemicals, fertilizers. It's even in the presses that print your precious paper. And it's also in the air I breathe. We lived without it before, we could again. What? Back to wood and metal for industry. Huh. Wool and cotton for our clothing. It's a romantic idea, but the hard fact is, there's not enough to go around. I'd rather pull in my belt for a wee while and get the job done properly. Look, a hundred years from now, people will still be trying to clear up the mess you folk have left behind. Yes. Well, there was a price paid for the Industrial Revolution, and there'll be a price to pay for oil. The price is too high well, if don't it you means... read any other newspapers but your own. Speed is vital. It's that attitude that cost a man his life today. Men have died in the rigs too, Mr. Gallagher. I, I, I've just one more question for you, Cameron. Look, who ordered those pipes? Triumph Oil. Oh. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they hold the same opinions as you about this sorry business.
driver to control. Airborne and en route to range. Over. Control to India, Bravo. A message received. Over. Any more from Met and the chances of fog? Fog? What fog? Roger and I. There's a bank of fog rolling in towards the rig. It may reach it before we do. Hey. Will it? You say they don't know yet. <laughs> I'm afraid this statement merely regretting the accident is no kind of satisfactory answer to the questions I'm wanting to put to Mr. Fraser. Perhaps I can answer these questions. Uh, with respect, Miss Smythe, I prefer they came from Mr. Fraser himself rather than his public relations officer. Well, he's a very busy man. Too busy to deal with a very busy representative of the press in a matter of public interest. It's not Mr. Fraser's job to deal with the press. It's mine. Well, part of mine, Mr. Gallagher. Miss Smythe, I'm not used to company bosses hiding behind another person, however charming she may be. It's the way of the world. Not the way of my world. Well, at present, you happen to be in mine. Yours? <laughs> You're in Scotland, are you not? Well, Mr. Gallagher, notwithstanding Scots were hay and all that, the statement's the best I can do, at least until after the inquest. Well, I'll say this for it. It's a nice statement. Thank you. It's neatly typed. Well punctuated, no spelling errors. Says everything. <laughs> Means nothing. Oh, good. It seems I have a future in public relations. <laughs> Can I tempt you to a drink before you go? No temptation required. I never refuse a drink on duty. Surprise me. Ask for a gin and tonic. Oh, that's too high a price to pay for surprising anyone. <laughs> Fog bank still rolling in. How fast do you reckon she's travelling? Eight to, to ten miles an hour. She's only about two miles away. Has the brake holding? She's holding. She'd better. Tell communications to let the chopper know about the fog. Bravo to Nelson. Over. Rig. Estimated arrival time. 20 minutes. Oh, just what we don't need. Okay. Now we'll just try and get there first. Over and out. The fog, huh? India Bravo, over. India Bravo to control, over. Met reports fog forming in your area, over. It's formed and we're in it. Out. Weather scutter. It'll be snowing out the rig set too. Orbit. Let's try and spot the lights. before the storm that's growing. This fog could hang a couple of days. Equator! Weight's dropping and she's beginning to slip. We've got to get that spear down somehow. Come on, Chuck! 
They flew right past us. Aye. I'll get the extension set. Try to talk them down. The skipper's going to try and talk us in. You are now east of the rig and going away. Control to India Bravo, over. India Bravo to control. Uh, Frank, this is Jim Fraser. Hold it right there, will you? I'm, ho I'm calling the rig. Roger, out. Uh, control to Nelson 1, over. Wait to control, over. Uh, put the tool push on, will you? Roger. McCoy here, Mr. Fraser. Ah, Mac, how are those brakes behaving? Beginning to slip. Mm, badly. Pretty bad. Right, out. Frank, did you hear all that? Yeah. Look, it occurs to me that the lights on the rig, the heat from them might thin out the fog a little. Now, if you go down low, you might be able to see. OK, Jim. We'll give it another go. the rims go and the fog stays, we lose two whole drilling days. I know. I don't like it any more than you do. Give it one more try. Well, no, we nearly hit the derrick just then. If we had, you'd lost the downside more than two days drilling. Well, what does the pilot say? I don't care what he thinks. I'm not risking it anymore, and that's final. That's over and out. Home. Yes. I'm Shona Campbell from the Muirport Gazette. <laughs> Is your husband at home? Home? Right now he's in a helicopter over the North Sea. Oh, pity. That's not what I said. Would you like to come in? Thank you. I was hoping for an interview with the two of you together. Well, the best times for that are either the middle of the night or the crack of dawn, and even then you have to be lucky. Will you come in? Oh, I see. You could give me a, a woman's point of view on the oil business. 
three words. It's a blasted nuisance. That's four. <laughs> so it is. <gasps> Miss Campbell. Miss Campbell, I was looking forward to a lovely weekend in Edinburgh and it doesn't look like happening. So would you sit down? I could really use someone to talk to. Thank you. I was going to have a drink. Will you join me? Thank you. Uh, uh, whiskey and water, please. A fella's drink. In Scotland, it's practically everybody's drink, Mrs. Ward. <laughs> As my husband would say, that figures. And my name's Julie. I'm Shona. Right, Shona. Good health. And you too. You're not an American, are you, Julie? Well, it says so on my passport, but that's only because I married one. No. Actually, I'm from the West Indies, which probably makes me more British than the British. <laughs> and you? Where are you from? Here, Muirport. My father has a farm outside the town. Then we're both daughters of the soil. Mine runs a sugar plantation. And uh, Mr Ward, where's he from? Where they're fond of claiming they grow the biggest and the best in the world, including oil men. Texas? Where else? <laughs> Do you? Uh, no, thank you. How did you meet? Oh, well, <laughs> yes, that was a real drama. I was engaged to a boy I'd known practically all my life. And our wedding was to be the social event of the season. So I was in a store, choosing, of all things, my honeymoon nighty. When up comes this big guy, and he starts looking through the nightgowns, too. Um, do you mind? She's about your size. And he held this beautiful negligee against me. Who is? And he said, my sister. <laughs> we were married four days later, and I was still wearing Harry's engagement ring. Mind you, then I thought the oil business was romantic, but excuse me. Hello? <gasps> yes. Yes, Jim, that's fine. <laughs> yes, goodbye. And thank you for letting me know. Frank won't be long. Another drink. Three months deadline is bad enough. Now we've got a deadline with a dead drill. Any ideas? Well, one thing you could do, Mr. Fraser. Yeah? Call the standby ship. Have her sail out of the fog. I dump the rim on her decks. As soon as the fog thins, she sails back to Reagan and puts it on board. No good. No? No, the fog will be stretching halfway to Muirport by now. It means four hours sailing time each way. Well, sometimes safety is better than none at all. I'll set it up. Now, wait a minute, Jim. I'm waiting. Look, we've tried going down to the rig. I think maybe I know a way of going up to the rig. Mm hmm. Sounds original. Okay. Rig, standby ship. The idea is we radio the standby ship to attach a strobe light to her mast that, uh, the sea's pretty calm. Uh, at a height that's exactly 30 feet above sea level. Then we have her sail a five-degree deviation course away from the rig. The chopper meets her at a pre-calculated distance from the rig, then levels off at the same height as the strobe light on the mast. We then know that we're exactly 30 feet above sea level. Could your altimeter show you that? Not accurate enough at that height over water. But that's the point. You see, whatever reading we get when we're level with that strobe light, it'll enable us to fly a course exactly the same height from the ship to the rig. 
At a given point, we know we're going to hit the rig. Hit the rig. No. Figure of speech. Oh. We go in slow, and I mean dead slow. Three miles an hour. And even in that fog, we should be able to see the rig before we hit her. And that's not a figure of speech. We hover. Yeah. And we'll know that we're 30 feet above sea level. We know the height, the height of the heli deck is 70 feet. So we get straight up 40 feet, and there we are. No, 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 no. Why not? No, it's 40 plus 12. Well, we have the load underneath. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Now, what do I keep saying? We? Yeah, it's all down to the pilot, Weston. All I can tell you is that it worked for me once, something like this, in Nova Scotia, when I had to land on the top of a cliff in fog. Okay, make it we. Let's do it. Good luck. Frank, just a minute. Mrs. Ward, will you? Hello, darling. Uh, no, it isn't darling. It's uh, Jim Fraser. Hello, Jim. Um, <laughs> Jim, has Frank not landed yet? Uh, yes, he has, but um, he's um, had to take off again, back to the rig. Oh? Yeah, I thought I'd better let you know. Meaning he didn't? Well, he was a bit rushed. There's rather a lot going on out there in the rig. Yes, Jim, there always is. Goodbye. I'm sorry, Shona, my husband isn't coming after all. Oh, I see. Well, never mind. I've certainly got enough for a feature on the woman's page. I wouldn't mind so much being an oil widow if they didn't have to find the stuff in such blasted backer beyond places. You mean like Newport, my hometown? Oh, I'm sorry. But you take my advice. Don't ever marry into the oil business. Not even the Scottish oil business. I'm not sure whether you're being patriotic or whether you've got someone in mind. I'm not sure either. RAF radar have agreed to cooperate. The standby ship's in position at the rig and they're putting the strobe light to the mast now. Okay. Good luck. Let's hope we're the only ship moving about in this suit. I'll drink to that. Estimated position of the ship, seven miles. Entering fog bank, now. I'll turn in to see now. Stop at your helm. Stop all engines. Stop all engines. Right. We're on station. All hands, listen out for the chopper. Down to 20 knots. Watch 
Start for the stroke. avoiding action. There must be another ship down there. Midships. Starboard five. Midships. Steady as she goes. Stop engines. Stop engines. Sound off. Sound off. Two, three, five degrees. Ship's heading back to station. Keep looking. Stop engines. Stop engines. Listen out. Listen out. Tell the chopper he's approaching us on the starboard side. Estimate about 400 yards in closing. India Bravo, this is Pride of Bucket. You're approaching on the starboard side. Approaching on the starboard side. About 400 yards and closing. Audio contact. We should spot them any time now. Approximately two to three degrees, distance about two miles. India Bravo, your approach to the rig is approximately two to three degrees, about two miles. He says, What's with this approximately? It can't be as exact as we would have been without the avoidant action. Tell him sorry. Sorry about that. We had to take avoiding action against another ship. Is he not half as sorry as he is? go. We didn't turn yet. We fly slap into it. No dent. Which leg? Support. Go left.
position. Okay, Roger and out. From the chopper. Many thanks. We'll bang on. Merely genius, that's all. Your company ought to give the pilot a bonus for what he's just done. What, for doing his job? Well, no, for doing it darn well. I expect all our people to do their jobs darn well. I wouldn't hire them otherwise. Just a thought. How are you, Mac? Let's get on with it. No need for you to stay. I can handle it from here. Well, I'm not leaving to let drills run if it takes all night. Don't worry, it will. We've got to lay down the blocks, unbolt the old rims and fit the new. Well, like I said, then. Let's get on with it. Sure, no. I'm glad I caught you. Listen, oh. would you like a drink tonight, then maybe a bite to eat? No, I would not. Why, well, you should be grateful. Surely you wouldn't want to spend an entire evening with a person who talks rubbish. What? Oh, I see. Old Gallagher has been talking. Oh, look, Shona, sure, no. I only said that in the heat of the moment. And I'm only saying this in the heat of the moment, Donald Cameron. No, N-O. Where there's a ghetto, there's a way. Patience, Cameron, patience. She loves me. Oh, honey, last night I called you some awful things. She loves me not. Oh. She loves me. That was last night. Yeah. Come, dear. 
to bed. Sleep. <laughs> 